Hi, Tip Top Audio's powerful step sequencer, the Circadian Rhythms, got a new dress. Its case was redesigned with a black panel, white text and golden details. We now offer you the possibility to choose between the classic white and this new darker version, according to what better fits your system. Let us take advantage of this news to dive deeper into some cool ways in which you can use your sequencer. The core of this patch is controlled by the Circadian Rhythms module. It works as the master sequencer and master clock. As you can see, turning the clock knob will show us the BPM of the sequence. Thanks to its many functions, the Circadian Rhythms allows you to create unusual and interesting grooves, like the one you're hearing right now. Can you imagine getting this level of complexity on a standard DAW? It might be possible, but this is much more fun. Let's dive into the patch and have a look at how all of this is put together. The main feature that contributes to the appeal of this patch is definitely the zoom mode. Zoom is one of the many views offered by this module, but differently from the others, it allows you to program your sequences at micro resolution. Enter zoom mode and you'll notice that the sequence moves vertically. Here, the first column hosts the standard 8 steps offered by the other views like vertical, while column from 2 to 6 allow you to insert additional in-between notes or sub-steps as we like to call them. Lastly, columns 7 and 8 are dedicated to the navigation through presets and channels. Going back to vertical view, some of the notes are now lit up in red to signal the presence of uh, sub-steps. As you can see here, we are using all of the 8 channels offered by the circadian rhythms. The first one controls one, which changes the sample every time a note is triggered, and works in quantized pitch and sequence loop mode. Thanks to the SAC cables, it also controls the Z4000 and the Z8000 modules. Every time the Z4000 is triggered, it opens up the VCA via an IDSR, which in turn controls the samples coming from one. This way, we can make the sounds extremely tight and slick. The Z8000 modulates the pitch of 1. Going back to the circadian rhythms, channel 8 triggered the ZDSP effect unit, and does so one time every two rows. The trigger changes the preset contained in the spiral card. The effects are then applied to the sound coming from the VCA. Next, channel 2, 3, 4 and 5 are used to create a nice little groove of bass drum, 909 close hi-hat, snare and 808 open hi-hat. Channel 6 instead controls the 808 maracas, which is used in zoom mode to add a little frizz to the beginning of the groove. Lastly, channel 7 controls the 808 close hi-hat, which is once again in zoom mode. If we mute the channels 2, 3, 4 and 5, we are now only left with the channels working in zoom mode, which as you can hear, they add a lot of character to it. To glue the groove together, we also use a few effects. A little reverb is applied to the 909 hi-hat, and a really short echo helps coloring the sound of the whole groove. Finally, we take everything and pass it through the Forbidden Planet filter. Here we are using two of its inputs. The low pass one is applied to the wall groove, while the band pass is only working on the 808 open hi-hat. Its attenuator is subly modulated by one of the Z8000 rows. Playing with the frequency of the filter produces these unusual textures and modulation. It's unpredictable and really fun to improvise with it. This next patch explores another extremely useful way in which you can use your circadian rhythms, and that is its ability to change the length of the gate outputs. By simultaneously selecting two steps which are far from each other, the CR would also automatically activate all the steps in between, codified as a single long gate. Let's dive into how the patch was constructed. Output 2 controls both a 1 module and a Z4000 module. 
The SD card containing one is filled with string samples which form the pads that we are listening right now. The Z4000, with its long gait, acts on the Forbidden Planet. It controls a low-pass input which modulates the sounds coming from one, making them softer and more lush. The output of the Forbidden Planet goes into the Z-verb and the echoes. On the Z-verb, we have chosen a preset called 70's Earliest Verb, whilst the echoes is loaded with a ping-pong tape echo. Channel 1 triggers the 808 close hi-hat in zoom mode. Channel 3 controls an additional one module containing a vocal sample. Its amplitude is modulated by a VCA in order to achieve a tighter, almost tremolo-like effect. Next in line, Channel 4 provides the pulse of our truck by triggering an 808 kick which is processed by the ZDSP effect unit. Channel 5 triggers the TG1 module, which is Tip Top's collaborative effort with industrial pioneers probing Rissel. After that, Channel 6 is connected to the 808 rimshot, processed with our ZDSP unit. Channel 7 controls the last one module contained in dispatch, and as you can see, its output goes straight into the feedback input of the ZDSP. Lastly, channel number 8 controls the 808 snare drum, once again affected by the ZDSP, which emphasizes the sound of the kick in an alternate fashion. By scrolling through, you can see how all the different channels were programmed in this patch. As you can hear, all these different sounds contribute to create a captivating and evolving soundscape. This patch explores the random functionality of the circadian rhythms a mode that we developed with the help of Richard Devine, and for this reason, we call it the D mode. We can access it by pressing down the global button. As you can see, the D mode is off at the moment, so the sequence repeats identically at the end of each cycle of the 64 active steps. If you press down the D button, this can turn either green or red. When the LED is lit in green, it indicates the activation of the proximity random function. What it means is that each time a new preset is triggered, it will be restricted to the row above or below the previous one. When instead the LED is lit in red, the random mode has no restriction whatsoever and therefore can trigger any of the activated presets. To add an additional level of randomness, we can set the clock of the CR in external clock mode, meaning that the sequencer will source its clock from a separate module. In this specific case, we use the trigger riot to control the speed of the clock. The column of the trigger riot which is generating it is using different clock dividers and probability variables on each of the four knobs. The sequence of notes that we are listening to at the moment is generated by the Z8000 and processed by the quantizer. This way, only the black keys of the keyboard are passed on. The FM sounding percussions present in this patch are obtained using a couple of Z2040s in self-oscillation, thanks to their resonance being maxed out. The first controls the FM of the second. The sound is then filtered through the Forbidden Planet, which in turn feeds into the echoes in tape delay mode. The second sound source is an unedited oscillator, which is capable of generating fluid sound waves and vibratos, such as the ones you are listening right now. We will reveal this new module to the public soon, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. 
The sound is also processed by the additional forbidden planet and ends up into the Z verb, which helps creating this lush sonic background. The result is a classic example of a generative patch that never repeats itself identically. You can listen to it for a long period of time without getting bored, and it also works perfectly as a relaxing soundtrack to daily routines. 